Another week, another opportunity yeah. to talk about this topic. Was yeah. there anything in either of those interviews that well, really jumped out at you? They're different. Susan, you know, they did talk about taking down some things, and Google did release a new policy taking down obviously false ads, demonstrably false ads, and it wasn't technical, it's demonstrably false. So they're trying to thread a needle there that's very difficult, and then they put in a lot of uh, new rules around micro-targeting or banning a lot of stuff. And so Mark is sort of sticking to one side, while Jack Dorsey sticks to another, and, and Susan and YouTube and Google are in the middle. Um, but, you know, it's, it continues to be the same issue with Mark thinking that he's like a television or, or, ra or radio or newspaper, but this virality is massive, and it's not just politicians lying. It's, it's lying and lying and lying, and it keeps going, and it iterates and iterates and iterates. So he keeps trying to bring himself into a regular media market when this is nothing like anything we've ever seen before. Uh, how are, I don't understand in, in Zuckerberg's answer there how a consumer of this information is supposed to know that it's false. That's right. There's so many. Of, that's that's the issue. It's not just one ad that we can, like, fact check. And that, that that's relatively easy to do for the media. to do. This is impossible to fact check, given the iterations of it and how it go, how it might... He, he, he left out the important... He always leaves out the important parts. By the way, his wife was incredibly articulate about it. I wish she was running Facebook some days. But she she actually had a very... These are complex topics and everything else. She, she was trying to reflect the complexity. But he's not talking... He didn't talk about micro-targeting, which changes the equation he didn't talk about. It's literally like whispering a million different messages in a million different ears. And that is very different from what he's trying to link himself to. And so he's trying to simplify something that's extraordinarily complex. And, you know, we'll see if they do anything, but the, the steps that Google is making is the steps in the right direction. You don't have to go an all-out ban. You don't have to constantly edit politicians. That's not what they're talking about. It's the manipulation to conflate manipulation and misinformation with just bloviating ads is, is, is a real disservice to, to the U.S. electorate. And there's always been this other line, which is, well, maybe they could just modify the algorithms yeah. to how it gets spread and how many people it gets served up to. But it seems almost as if that's an admission that left alone, right. it just kind of right. propagates it, it, everywhere. We're, we're dealing with two different things. Again, politicians always do sort of overextend in ads, right? But that's a very different thing on a television or a newspaper ad versus what happens online, which is these very highly micro-targeted ads that they're trying to, you know, I think I, I sort of, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, of all people, free speech doesn't mean free reach. And that's, you, you can't conflate misinformation and manipulation with ads, essentially, like, in this way. And I think that's what they're trying to do to make it simple for the American public. But it's not simple. I think what struck me the most um, with both these companies, and you can say this across the social media spectrum, maybe maybe not with Twitter and certainly not with Square, because I, or Square, excuse me, um, with um, Snap. Snap. Thank you. Well, not that's going to be our next all. topic. Um, the fact that they are fact-checking. But when you do look at Alphabet, when you do look at Facebook, there does, and it came out in both these interviews, there does seem to be this very specific line in the sand about just how far they'll go with fact-checking or reviewing the material that goes onto the sites. Yes, but we aren't asking them to tell us that politicians lie. We're asking them to remove blatant misinformation and not micro-target lying ads to people. I, it's not that much to ask, and it's not, it has nothing to do with, it's, this is paid speech. It's very different as far as, you know, you can do whatever you want on Twitter. And by the way, look, Senator John Kennedy was talking conspiracy theories on NBC. So, like, you can do that. It just can be then easily fact-checked. Yeah. Uh, uh, finally, speaking of Twitter, I've seen a, a number of things going by today. I'm curious if you have a thought about the Zuckerberg-Trump meeting that took place that we don't really I don't know, know much anything. about. I don't know what happened. I think he probably was talking about his Twitter number. I mean, his Twitter, excuse me. He was probably talking about the uses of uh, social media. He's very interested in his accounts. Right. Um, I suspect he was, you know, complaining about conservative uh, bias against conservatives. It, you know, the whole menu of the same stuff that he always that he does publicly. I don't know if Trump says things publicly he doesn't say privately. I think he, he kind of lets it all hang out. In that out. case, yeah, he seems yeah. to. Yeah, so I suspect to. it was the same thing. And Mark sat and did Shook this. Shook his head. Yeah.